Welcome to the Australian Leadership Index's series of interviews with influential leaders on the topic of the future of leadership for the greater good. Today, we hear from Mr. Colin Seary, the Chief Executive Officer of Lifeline Australia, appointed in March 2019 after a series of leadership positions in the health sector for more than 20 years. Mr. Colin Seary joins us today to discuss his thoughts on the future of leadership for the greater good. Leadership for the greater good really indicates to me an ethical and an honourable way to lead as a, as a starting point. And I think to, you know, to get outside some of the aspirations we might have for ourselves or typically for stakeholders or shareholders of organisation and to move out into the community. And I think from a leadership perspective, it's critically important if you're involved with an organisation for the greater good, that there you have real clarity about, you know, what is your role in community and and, and what are you trying to achieve? And then to be able to articulate what, what are the differences you're making? And for me, that's critically important in terms of leadership for the greater good. We have no problem at Lifeline articulating what our value is for the community. We have a, a rather a lofty vision of an Australia free of suicide. You know, obviously with COVID and um, while when I'm doing this video, we're currently in a lockdown situation in different parts around the country as I speak. And surprise, surprise, the demand for our services have gone through the roof. And I think for Lifeline, one of the challenges of, in my view, in leadership in organisations for greater good is at Lifeline, we're so fortunate. We've got over 11,000 staff and amazing volunteers around the country. And there, there is no problem in terms of articulating what's the purpose of us being involved. But there's also that tension of, you know, I mentioned about the increase in demand, for example. Well, guess what? That means, you know, extra resources and that commercial necessity to, to get additional funding to, to work like that. So I think for us at Lifeline, real clarity on, on, on our role for the greater good, how do we support that and how do we achieve a vision is, is often a bit of tension. So I, I guess I have a view that you can be an organisation for the greater good but also be a very sophisticated professional organisation as well. They're not mutually exclusive. And sometimes we do have to have a commercial lens on the organisation to achieve our aims. And I think as long as we've always got our vision and what we're trying to achieve at the end, that to me um, balances that out. And I guess to give you an example, I'm going to present to our staff the financial year 22 business plan. So there'll be a whole range of corporate objectives in that plan, but also what's critically important to our people is, you know, if we have a revenue target, for example, which we have, why have we got that revenue target? Well, it's because we're deciding that mental health and suicide and crisis in youth is, a, is at an all-time high. So guess what? Young people aren't necessarily going to pick up the phone, but they may text. So we are going to develop the channels we operate you know, how do we get better infrastructure, et cetera. So that's the, I guess, that's what it means for us at Lifeline. Whilst that tension is, to me, is one of the differences in leadership, having sort of led commercial organisations and I guess not-for-profit or for the greater good organisations, the, you know, I think in a sense a real positive is that, you know, sometimes in some organisations, it, it, it can be in challenge from a leadership point a view to, for people to really buy into the purpose. We, we just don't have that problem. It's about how do, we, how do we leverage that and we continue to go back. And, but I think it is important instead of, uh, I think I mentioned the example before, instead of just putting up you know, bread and butter KPIs, boom, 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 this is what this will mean. This is what this will mean. And this leads back to an Australia free of suicide. So that's, that's critically important for us. But... It is, a, it's a tension. We've got some tremendous relationships with CEOs and managing directors. And I think with that corporate social responsibility hat of organisations, and it's quite interesting in the mental health space, there's been a corporate mental health alliance formed, which is CEOs. And, and again, uh, and I am fortunate to, to be involved in the advisory board of that organisation. And these are leaders in business who have shareholders at them every day. But I can guarantee you their commitment to mental health is extraordinary. So I have, 
I sort of have real faith in um, some of the leaders in the country at the moment, having experienced them sort of personally and professionally. So I think that, you know, again, within their core set of values and that corporate social responsibility, if they are serious and walk the walk, sitting next to each other, willing to share information and programs, uh, you know, in relation to, to mental health, and it, it can work. And these are leaders in business. They've got an extraordinary wellness program and, you know, and mental health initiatives for their staff, and, and they're absolutely willing to share it with the group. And so, you know, one of the aims of that organisation is to have a, I guess, a best in breed, you know, initiative. So again, in our world of mental health and suicide prevention, I mean, it's quite uplifting, really. That tension is quite an interesting one that, you know, my background way or, or down the tracks a bit was sort of, um, you know, commercial as well. And, and so, you know, that balance and that tension is really quite interesting and, and bringing everyone along on the ride. That's been a, that's been a good learning for me. It's been great.